Long before the breaking of the world, the Age of Legends was a time of peace, prosperity, and advanced technology, made possible in large part because of the Aes Sedai, servants of humanity who channeled Sidene and Sidar, the male and female halves of the One Power. This unique, magical energy flowing from the true source allowed them to heal wounds and illnesses, construct beautiful, nearly indestructible structures, perfect food production, and perform many other incredible feats which eliminated poverty, hunger, and homelessness around the world. Although evil, greed, and selfishness did exist, it was exceedingly rare as social and professional status was dependent on good works and how one's actions helped to serve humanity. Among the many great centers of learning, none were more prestigious than the University of Kolom Dan and Sharom, its research center, a great floating sphere where a number of their top scientists, including Baidoman and Mirin Aronil, discovered the true power, a new source of magical energy located beyond the pattern of reality which could be accessed equally by both men and women, meaning it was free from the frustrating limitations of the One Power. Eager to access this new source of magic, researchers drilled a small hole called the bore through the pattern, only to discover they made a terrible mistake, as the energy detected came from the Dark One, Shaitan, a primordial being of evil who stood in contrast to the Creator. Although the boar was not big enough for the Dark One to escape his prison outside reality, it allowed him to directly touch and influence the world creating a renaissance of greed, anger, jealousy, and violence which swept across their lands. Despite the immediate destruction of Sharom and Kolom Dawn, the full effects of the Dark One's corruption spread slowly, leading to the collapse of their near-utopian civilization over the next century. With humanity made more susceptible to their evil impulses, many joined the Dark One, lured to his side with promises of immortality and greater prominence in the new world he would create. Ordinary humans who turned against the light were known as friends of the Dark, while Aes Sedai traitors were called the Chosen and the Forsaken. These greater servants of evil were marked by the Dark One, which in addition to making all his minions obey them, meant he could find them wherever they went, never escaping his grasp. Though some of these people immediately went over to the shadow, bolstering their armies, others remained with the forces of light, acting as spies and saboteurs, creating chaos and division among their ranks. The bravest, most ambitious, and dedicated of these followers swore their oaths of allegiance directly to the Dark One by traveling to Sheol Ghul, where the pattern of reality was thinnest, becoming the focal point of his power. Among the 29 Forsaken who were allowed to use the true power, 13 survived beyond the age, standing above the others in authority and ability, performing deeds of such malice and cruelty they were remembered for thousands of years. Among the male chosen, there was Ishamael, Ravin, Demondrid, Samael, Agenor, Balthamel, Osmodian, and Balal, while the females included Lanfear, Semiraj, Mogadian, Grendal, and Masana. After building up their forces, the Forsaken launched the War of the Shadow, also called the War of Power, a ten-year conflict which devastated the world, nearly causing the total collapse of civilization. Their ultimate goal was to release the Dark One from captivity so he could destroy all that was, and in its place create a new world in his own image, where the Forsaken and Dark Friends would rule in his name. Winning a number of early victories, the Dark One's armies conquered many territories where they ruled through terror and brutality. In addition to their human soldiers, their numbers were greatly augmented by Trollocs and other shadow spawn, vicious monsters created and controlled by the Forsaken, whose sole purpose was to destroy and wage war for the Dark One. Though they were initially caught unaware, the forces of light eventually organized themselves under the dragon Luz Theron Telamon and started to push the enemy back, retaking some of their lost lands. In addition to being hindered by the martial prowess of Luce Theron and his armies, the Dark Forces were afflicted by constant infighting, where their leaders and warriors engaged in an unending competition for supremacy as they sought to increase their personal power and authority. 
The Forsaken especially were always scheming against each other, hoping to be named Nablus or second in command to Shaitan, leading to many of their deaths. Despite the potential problems these internal struggles might have posed, the Dark One encouraged their rivalries as he wanted only the strongest under his command. Yet even so, their disadvantage did not last long, and soon the forces of darkness were once again on the offensive, with the armies of light experiencing their own problems, beset with betrayals, disorganization, low morale, and increased division among their leadership. Threatened by impending defeat, two major proposals to achieve victory were considered by the Aes Sedai in the Hall of Servants. The first, advocated by Luce Theron Telamon, was for the forces of light to attack Sheol Ghul, where six male and seven female Aes Sedai would conduct a ritual to seal the boar with seven Quendiar, which would cut off the Dark One's access to the world and ensure his indefinite imprisonment. However, this idea carried enormous risk, as their failure to perfectly place these seals could actually release the Dark One completely, dooming the world. The other proposal, supported primarily by the female Aes Sedai, Latra Pose Concord, was to use a special Terangrial and two powerful Sa'angrial to create a secondary prison around the boar, temporarily cutting off the Dark One's influence until a more permanent solution was found. A staunch enemy of Luce Theron's plan, Latra conspired against him by forming the fateful Concord, where all the most powerful female Aes Sedai of the Hall made an agreement forbidding them from aiding his efforts. Since the dragon's plan required the use of both Sidene and Sidar, it was quickly shelved and work began on Latra's proposal. Yet as the forces of darkness continued to advance, her approach suffered a severe setback when the territory where they held the necessary Terangrial was captured by the enemy. Making matters worse, the region which held the needed Sangrial were also being threatened and on the cusp of falling to the Dark One. With Latra's proposal in jeopardy and all efforts to retrieve the Terangrial failing, Luce Theron again tried to advocate for his position, but the female Aes Sedai continued to oppose him despite the fact they had no immediate alternative. Seeing enemy armies closing in and total defeat fast approaching, the dragon knew they could no longer wait, enacting his plan without the aid of female Aes Sedai. Accompanied by 113 of his closest supporters, called the Hundred Companions, and an honor guard of 10,000 warriors, Luce Theron marched to Sheol Ghul, arriving at the same time the Dark One was holding a meeting with his 13 most powerful Forsaken. Battling the armies of darkness, Luce Theron and his male Aes Sedai successfully completed their mission by perfectly placing the Seven Quendiar to close the boar and reseal the Dark One's prison. In fact, their efforts proved doubly successful as they also managed to trap all 13 Forsaken, thereby eliminating the Dark One's greatest generals and supporters. However, because there were no females present, the males were forced to exclusively use Sidene in their ritual, which meant directly touching the Dark One with this magical energy. This presented their enemy with a unique opportunity, and so he performed a counterstroke, tainting the male half of the One Power with his corruption, ensuring that anyone who used Sidene from that point forward would inevitably go mad with an unyielding desire for chaos, destruction, and violence. Therefore, in addition to losing 45 of the 100 companions and a great portion of their honor guard in the fighting, the rest of the male Aes Sedai, including Luce Theron, went mad, causing massive destruction to the world in the wake of their victory. Although the Dark One was defeated and his remaining armies pushed back, scattered and destroyed by the forces of light, every wielder of Sidene left alive started to lose their sanity, resulting in devastating damage to lands and seas over the next three centuries, referred to as the Breaking of the World, which only ended when the female Aes Sedai finished killing or gentling the last of their male counterparts. Though the Dark One and Forsaken were gone, the problems they faced in sealing the boar meant the threat was not completely eradicated, and so prophecies emerged, including the Corathon Cycle, which foresaw that the Shadow would one day return, as would the Dragon, reborn in a new body to again face off against this evil and save the world. 
Thus began the Third Age and years after breaking, when humanity attempted to rebuild from the ashes of their fallen civilization. Love The Wheel of Time or any other series? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up through the links below for regular membership and get a 30-day free trial, or else try Premium Plus for a 60-day trial and up to three free audiobooks. For those who prefer to read their stories, there is the Kindle Unlimited plan, where you get as many ebooks as you wish. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, along with the prequel novel and history book. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Warden of the X, Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Come Sia, Warden of the X, Chris Walder, the Crimson Shadow, Warden of the X, Sir Darren of House Ashford, and Knight of Iron and Ice, Fred Heartless. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.